We begin with new info tonight about the connection between 32 year old Joaquin Garcia and the man that police say he stabbed to death last night in Beaumont. Officers found Garcia a few miles away, a few hours later rather, and 200 miles away in Victoria, Texas. Police say he was making a run for it, trying to get all the way to the U.S.-Mexico border. Garcia now faces a murder charge. 12 News reporter Amelia White is live for us tonight. She's been following those details and has the latest. Jordan Dage, police say the two men were roommates. They say at the home, the pair shared 32 year old Wasin Garcia, who fatally stabbed 40 year old Norlin Moreno. Now, Beaumont police, they're calling it a domestic violence situation. Now they're trying to figure out what led up to the violence. Originally, it was in reference to a burglary. But officers quickly discovered a grisly crime scene at a home on Charles Street in Beaumont's North End. They were inside. They located uh, a deceased Hispanic male. Um, he was later identified as 40 year old Norland Moreno. Court documents say it was Moreno's common law wife who called 911. Police say she was at work, got an alert from her home surveillance camera. She noticed something was wrong. On viewing the video, a couple hours later, noticed um, an assault and a stabbing and ended up, uh, of course, realizing that the homicide had been captured on their surveillance video inside the house. After the stabbing, police say Joaquin took off, but they put out an alert for other law enforcement to be on the lookout for him. Authorities caught up with Garcia in Victoria, Texas, and they believe he was heading for the Mexico border. Now police are trying to figure out a motive. Find out exactly what's going on. As of right now, um, it's been basically a, a dis domestic disturbance and a domestic violence type situation. When you hear domestic violence, you may think about a romantic relationship, but Bonnie spots with the women's and children's shelter says that's not the case. In this case, it was a situation involving roommates that turned deadly. Domestic violence is defined by the nature of the relationship. So it has to be, you know, either an intimate partner relationship or a partner, a relationship where one has control over the other. Um, domestic violence is not about sex. It's about control. If you're a victim of domestic violence, you can call the hotline number at the bottom of your screen. A Bonnie with the Women's Shelter tells me they have trained specialists available and ready to help. I'm live in Beaumont. Amelia White, 12 News. Amelia, thank you. Tonight, a Jefferson County grand jury has indicted this Beaumont man on capital murder in connection with the death of his girlfriend. Police say Jonathan Menard killed his pregnant girlfriend, Kayla Rice, in November of last year. Her body was found in a shallow grave in Vinton, Louisiana, this February. Menard also faces a third-degree felony charge of tampering with evidence. And to a crime alert now, Jefferson County Sheriff's deputies say late last week, someone targeted the county. They say thieves broke into the Jefferson County Precinct 3 barn off Jade Avenue in Port Acres and stole some pretty big ticket items. Deputies say the suspects took two red Ferris brand mowers, six Wagayama brand weed eaters, and two red Yamaha weed eaters. So if you have any info about this robbery, call Crime Stoppers at 833-TIPS. The storm trackers hope you're enjoying the gorgeous weather. A live look outside tonight with the roofing 911 sky cam. Boy, it's certainly warmer than what we woke up to this morning. Patrick's with us. Looks like we got another chilly one on the way. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to be quite as uh, what we quite as cold as what we saw this morning. A uh, few areas up in the lakes area were dealing with wind chills in the mid 30s this morning. Not bad for late April, huh? Well, we'll get down into the lower 40s in the lakes area once again and into the mid to upper 40s and lower 50s in the triangle. So certainly well below normal once again. Currently uh, looking at temperatures in the 60s under uh, clear skies in southeast Texas will fall to 59 at 11 p.m. Unfortunately, it looks like a round of severe weather. All of southeast Texas, southwest Louisiana under a slight risk of severe weather, mainly Friday late and into Friday night across the area. More details on that coming up in your storm tracker forecast. Reaction continues to pour in following the 12 News mayoral debate. It was an opportunity for all candidates to address how they plan to grow and improve Beaumont. Now, political analyst Thomas Tassinger of the Beaumont Enterprise shared some of his takeaways today with 12 News reporter Leticia Cahey. 
Yeah, Dej and Jordan, this is no doubt a crowded field, and there was a good amount of dialogue last night. Tashinger says it showed just how strong the field is. Take a look at the names on the screen. Now, these are the names that will appear on the ballot for mayor. Roy West Jr., W.L. Pate, Begita Hernandez-Smith, LaShawn Proctor, and Robin Mouton. Tashinger says this group has their finger on the pulse of the community. They know what Beaumont voters want, and a lot has to do with their vision for the city's future. How can we grow our population? How can we attract new businesses? How can we keep the ones we have? And they had some good ideas. They're they, they, they've heard the problems or the challenges, and now the question is, what can the next mayor do to address those challenges and problems and maybe turn them around over the next two years? Tessinger believes each candidate had good responses. Even still, he predicts Roy West's popularity with the community and his visibility with his radio show will make him the frontrunner. But Tessinger also believes that it is still a very close race. He says it's very unlikely a single candidate would get 50 percent of the vote or more, meaning there will likely be a runoff election. And many people believe Beaumont is on the cusp of greatness, but hasn't seemed to take it to the next step in growth. Tashinger says the next mayor should be looking to move those goals forward. And early voting continues through April 27th. Election day is Saturday, May 1st. To find out what's on the ballot where you live, text the word VOTE to 409-838-1212. You will get the 12 News election guide sent straight to your phone. For 12 News, I'm Letitia Cahey. Texas politics tonight, we've seen it happen in other states, and now there's talk about reducing the penalties for marijuana possession. There are a handful of bills that would decriminalize use of possession or weed. Most of the bills propose loosening the pot penalties by doing things like getting rid of arrests, lowering penalties for possession, and preventing someone from losing their driver's license over marijuana charges. Opponents of the bill say marijuana is a gateway drug that often leads to other drug use and crime. Right now, many of us have seen them sitting in cemeteries, looking forgotten. Headstones from decades ago, dirty, unreadable, or destroyed. Markers touched only by time. But students is being passed are giving them a second chance. This is part of a project for high school students, and they started right before the pandemic. Dejanique, they're restoring history by restoring the headstones. 12 News reporter Christiana Ramos caught up with the teacher and students behind the project. McGaffey Cemetery is where this project all started. Three students with one goal, to preserve their town's history. A lot of history lies within the cemetery grounds in Sabine Pass. The earliest recorded burial in McGaffey Cemetery was that of a 12-year-old boy named Terrace B. King, who died in 1873. There were a lot of the headstones that weren't there. You could see there was a plot there, but you would see a rock, and there was not a lot of information. Then you would see that there were some uh, headstones that had been shot up. Hurricanes faded many of these headstones, including Harris King's. Mr. Hagendorn knew he wanted to get students involved with restoring the town's history. There was a rock that we actually had tested out. And when, when we were able to uh, etch onto the rock, I thought, we could probably do a headstone. So we started talking about that. The school shop teacher made a concrete frame with rebarb for longer lasting headstones and Hagendorn students etched slate for the inscriptions. We went on some internet websites. We found we found a findagrave.com. We started using that and we got a picture of an overview of the, what they what it used to look like here. We figured out the names and we went into deeper research looking for family members and what could have been on the grave originally. A project put on pause because of COVID. It's a good feeling finally finishing something good for the community. To keep the people of a small town still alive in some way. This is the only headstone that the students were able to finish this year, but Mr. Hagendorn is planning on keeping graphic design in the curriculum and the project still going in the future. In Sabine Pass, Christiana Ramos, 12 News.